Yo, yo, yo. What's up? What's up, man? It's the Front Porch, the Front Porch Radio. We got T. Ellis on the line, man. What's going on, bro? Um, not much, not much. What's up? So, you know, for everyone that, don't, that does not know who you are, you know, give us a little info, your background, where you from, what you're doing in the entertainment business. Let the, let the world know who you are, what you got going on. Okay, well, I'm from Alachua, Florida. Um, born in Gainesville, Florida, raised in Alachua, Florida. You know, right now I got a um a single out, ain't no competition. You know, I got the visual on YouTube, the songs and all digital stores. I also got three mixtapes, and um I also work with a magazine called PC Urban Magazine. You can find that on PCUrbanMag dot com. And oh, plus, man. I got my independent label, Ellis Entertainment, two artists. Ellis Entertainment, okay. Yeah, Bambi, Bambi Millions and um King James. And I also got Ellis Management, where I just manage models or artists. And I got a model by the name of uh, Leah Scott. Yeah, Leah Scott. You talking about her, man? A couple of questions. You said, you, you said, uh, what's the part of Florida you, you from again? I'm from Alachua, Florida. And I'm like, how close is that to like Miami or Tallahassee or Gainesville, like you know, Jacksonville, like you're on the front porch? Well, right it's now, pretty, it's headed. pretty close. To, we like we 15 minutes away from Gainesville. Now Miami, we like five, maybe like five or six hours away. Yeah, I, I love Tallahassee that. about the same, about the same thing. Okay. Now when you did that visual, like you know, when I saw you, you did the video, the video, the home of the Florida Gators on the on they on they on they field on they turf. What made what made you go that route? Well, I mean, you well Florida Gators, you know that, you know that mm-hmm. pretty much is a like landmark, so. Real time. Um, you know, I had to give it up. A friend of mine, I was like, man, why well, am I going to do this video? He said, why don't you do it to the stadium? And that made perfect sense. So we went to the stadium. It's like in part of the video, you'll see where we went, where it got a lot of the gated history, like, you know, pictures, like all the stuff on the wall. So we captured that. Okay. I like that. So. Like, um, can you tell us more about your management company and your other businesses as well? Because I know. You have a lot of lists. Well, as, the, as far as the management, I got one right now. I got one model, like I said, Leo Sky, and I got her right now. And I'm also, you know, you know, recruiting, looking for more. Okay. Ellis Entertainment. That's my indie label. I got two artists, Bambi Millions. You know, she in South Florida, and I got King James. She in Atlanta. Now I got a so, question. Cause I'm gonna cut you off, T. Ellis. I need a lot of artists. That's independent on up and coming, trying to trying to make positive moves. What was your choice for opening up your own label? Like, you know, why'd you go that way? Well, I'm gonna be honest. Like, um, no, I've been rapping since I was 12. Fast forward to my 20s, you know, I'm still rapping. So, a few years ago, I'm not going to say the name. I dealt with a couple people, you know. You know, paid them, thinking I was, mm-hmm. you know, they were going to do something. And they basically just, they basically rock. You know, oh, I paid yeah. them, they never did what they said they were going to do. So, after being robbed a couple of times, I'm like, man, because at that time I was just a pure artist. I was mm-hmm. just like a lot, a lot of other artists, you know, wanting to blow up and this and that. But then, you know, my former partner, because we were doing an independent label called Binding Musical, he started teaching me more about the business. So once yeah. I started learning, learning more about the business, and I was working with him like last year, you know, I learned, I learned, I learned a lot about the business. I was like, you know what, I can continue doing this. Exactly. And it, so my first, my first, my first love and passion is just for rap. Yes. But once I started shifting more towards the business, you know, even when we parted ways, I just pretty much kept doing what I was doing with him. Mm-hmm. But I just took, you know, short my last name. My last name is Ellison, and I say, you know what? I just call it Ellison Entertainment. I already had my own distribution. Okay. We parted ways. I went, you know, found two producers, and I started looking for artists. You know, so what's I just crazy? kept pretty much kept it going like that. You know, it's crazy. I have a similar story because you know, I, I, my first love is music as well. You know, I still record occasionally, but I did music with some certain people. You know, I ain't saying I'm bad about them because we had good times and bad times. You know, the music business go. But after a while, you start learning 
it's more than just going in the booth, want to get on stage. When you start figuring the business out, then it's like, why not sign my own check? Why yeah, not, and I also, and I also have to add, um, I also have a book out. It's on Amazon. Okay. It's called yeah, Love, yeah. Lost and, Love, Lost, and Life. Love, Lost, and Life. Because, you know, with the front porch, we got a small book club. And um, we, we have been in our book club, we have everything from the Charlemagne book to books about Jay-Z. We try to support hip-hop artists, you know, the, the, whole, the, whole, the whole realm, you know. Even um, work with a couple a couple ladies at the right book as well, too. So what's the name of your book again? Mm-hmm. What's the name of your book again? It's called Love, Lost, and Life. It's on Amazon, Amazon.com. All right, I'm gonna check that out tonight. I'm gonna to download it. What, now, what inspired you to, uh, to write that book? Well, I'll talk about it a lot, but in 2016, I um, I lost an ex of mine. She passed, you know, right. unexpectedly, you know, of a heart attack. Oh wow! So I went through a dark period for a few months. So when I lost her, I was like, man, you know how I'm gonna get through this? You know, it's just based out of working my way through the pain. So. The idea was like, okay, then once I got to a point I was able to cope with it, it just came together. I lost the love of mine, my ex, then, but I chose to keep, I chose to keep living. So, now, that inspired the idea. Now, the book is fiction. Because yeah. I want to, you know, be more, cur- more creative. So I put, it's fiction. Mm-hmm. So the book is about a guy who loses love and finds love again. Now, um, I also want to say all this could have been over for me because last year I had a setback for two months. For two months, I had a large stroke last year. Mm. The doctors they called a hemorrhage stroke. The type of stroke I had it caused bleeding and swelling on my brain at the time it happened. Oh wow! I'm yeah, so thank thank the God, you know, you know, thank Definitely thank God, God for man. sparing my life because. Mm-hmm. You know, when I survived yeah, that, my doctor's yeah. like, my doctor's like, Charles, you know you're lucky to be alive. But see, what they don't know, I always had a relationship with God. Yeah. So, so I went through that. I was in the hospital for about a month. I was in a nursing home for about a, for a month. So for two months, I couldn't walk. It affected my whole left side. So mm-hmm. I had to go to a nursing home to do therapy. You know, I went from everything to the wheelchair to a walker to the cane, all of that. But God brought me out of that situation. So with that being said, I can tell anybody, God is most definitely real. Definitely. This ain't no religion talk. God is most definitely real. And one thing, one thing with me, man, in 2007, I was in the, uh, I was headed to open up a pop pool for Jada Camp. I got ejected out and of And you know, another, I mean, not to and, cut you off, one more thing. Um, yeah. You know, when that happened. Um, I'm then God spared my life and everything, but um, I just want to give a you know thanks to everybody who prayed for me. You know, my sister. You know, she's like you know Christian. She did a lot of praying, and everybody who prayed, prayed for me. I also want to thank all the you know the PT, the therapist who who gave me that rehabilitation. Pretty much yeah, got me back to where I'm in, where I'm at, where I'm now. And I want to thank the lady. She's currently not my girlfriend, but she's going to, you know, soon to be yeah. my wife. Mm-hmm. She's stuck oh, by my nice. side. Like, during the time oh, I was in the hospital, she was by my side 24 hours, it, 20, it, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Mm. Through the whole thing. Then when I was at the nursing home, she came by a few times a week to see me. So, you know, once I seen she was there for me like that, I went ahead and put a ring on her. Shout out to Beyonce. <laughs> Got to put a ring on her, yo. She that she that much yeah. seven days a week. You know, listen home, fighting for your life. That's love, mm-hmm. cause you know that that's not like okay. I'm going to the club. And um, so we turn out, that's one that really loves and cares for you, man. That's a blessing. Man. Yeah, God bless you. So she she lives in Gainesville. Okay, I know she. Her name is Raven Walker. So, but and I'm other than you know, you know, yeah. And my sister, you know, all the prayers and everybody else who prayed for me, and a friend of mine that I also do music with. He stuck by my side as well. Mm. So you got a testimony, brother. You really yeah, most definitely. You know. So and I'm glad that you that you that you're not afraid and not scared to give it up to God because you know God is the reason that we're here. He puts us through situations right. to make us make us stronger, so we so we, that we could be missionaries to you know help help the next person out. You know, 
He gives us all gifts. And once once we learn our gift and master it, we teach the next one so they can learn their gift, man. So what you're doing is very special. I have a question for you, though, Mr. T. Ellis. Ain't no competition. Like, when you see me, I'm like, ooh. Individual, in the artwork, I'm like, ain't no competition. So I checked it out. And I like the song a lot. I like the song a lot. Like, where did that, ain't no competition. What does that mean? Oh, you're talking, you're, you're talking about the concept? Yes. Well, for me personally, being that I'm a rapper, MC, you know, I, yeah, I do rap music, but I'm I'm more into the culture of hip-hop, like everything from the slang to talk and all that. There's been times in my, you know, upbringing, I done battle rap other rappers, you know, that was in my area. So mm-hmm. I'm more of an MC. Yeah. For, for all the real real MCs, they real MCs, they know what that means. So you gotta control the crowd. You got you go with the room. Yeah. Thing. So I'm into the battling, the lyrics, you know, the lyrics, the wordplay, the bars, all that. So when I said ain't no competition, no disrespect to nobody else. Pretty much saying any rapper that want to battle, we can we can go, we can get it. It's whatever. <laughs> and, yeah, it's pretty much whatever. So that's what it means for me. Now. It can be applied now for somebody else, you know, if a person at a job and somebody else got the same position as them, if they want to feel like, oh, I'm on, they're on top of the game, nobody else ain't no competition, and I'm on top of my game, what I do, I do other people doing the same, they can apply it to their life. Basketball players, football players, they can apply it to their life. So that's, that's pretty much the whole breakdown of that. And I like how you did it at, um, at the home of the Florida Gators. You know, I'm from Miami, so, you know, you know, I'm a Hurricanes fan, but I got to love all the Florida teams. But, you know, the fact you did it there, you know, it represented the whole – when I saw the video and heard the song, it represented the whole Florida culture of, you know – Right. You're from Florida. I don't care how small or big you is. Like, I'm small. I ain't fast, but I play football like everybody else did, you know, because that's what we do. You know, that's a Florida thing. And I'm glad that you, you, you put your music – and the video all together for something positive, man. Cause we need that positivity. And I, I got a couple of questions for you, T. Ellis. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right, cool. Um, what what is what is like one thing you want to change in your community? Like, you know, if, if you could change anything that's going on in your community or in our culture, what would you want to see change? Well, one thing I would like to change is, um, you know. Nobody really has no control over it, but, you know, being in Gainesville, you know, these last couple of years, there's been a lot of killings and all that. You know, bring more positivity as far as, you know, you know, big up the G Herbal. Like, um, part of the reason, I really don't know, but part of the reason, you know, teens and younger adults probably do what they do as far as killing or quick to pull a gun. Because in the community, it's not a lot for them to do. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. You know, that's one thing. So when you're growing up in the hood and all that, for sure a lot of people know, you pretty much adapt to your environment. You either can, you either um, rise above it or you become a victim. And sadly, a lot of people become a victim of it. So just need more... You know, more positive stuff, you know. For certain people, they can say it, but that's for example, a person can be in there saying like, oh, I want to do this and do that, but they'll ride past the hood and go back to the suburbs, talk about it, but they, you know, you got to get out of there in the field. You got to make, you know, touch hands contact. Show them, you know what I'm saying? That's another You know, way. so the thing that some people do, the boys and girls club, it's people already doing stuff like that, but Basically, put more jobs in the hood to so where teens and more old adults can, you know, have, put, you know, can make money and buy their work that's going to occupy their time. Okay. Oh, my. You know, you know what, T. Ellis? Like, I'm, a, I'm in West Virginia. I'm from Miami. I'm in West Virginia right now. And I say the same thing. I'm, I'm, in, a very, I'm in a very small city, a small town. You know, I, if I go out to the main street, make a left, I'm in the mountains. I make a right, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in town, you know. And I tell people all the time, like out here, it's not much for for these teens and young adults to do. So what do they do? They fall to want to be want to be live that gang culture, gangster thug life, what they see on TV, or they want. Or, or next thing you know, they popping pills, not in your own dope, 
and now they hope their family's messed up because they don't have anything to do with their time. The time's not right. positive, and it hurts because if they have something to do, it's, it's, it's a good chance that a lot of these young brothers and sisters could be saved. They, they can find a way out, you know, to make their lives better for their family, for their friends, for spot the people. And I'm glad that you said that, man. Mm-hmm. I have another question too for you, man. Now, T. Ellis, what is your definition of success? What is success to Mr. T. Ellis? Well, what success means to me, um, being successful in whatever career you choose, um, being able to make a better life for yourself. If you have kids and, you know, married, make a better life for your family and your family, family, meaning brother, sister, cousin, um, have a business to where when your kids grow up, they don't have to work for nobody. You could just pass it to them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's what success means to me. And, you know, be able to live good and not have to struggle. For real. So when your daughter or son get grown, instead of them, you know, worrying about a job, looking for a job, if the family business is already open, they you can just pass it to them. The opportunity is open. If they want to do something else, that's cool, but yeah. they need opportunities to, to grow and become positive young men and women to be inspirational to other people and, and, to, and to stay out that craziness in, in the world that we see. Mm-hmm. Now, another question for you, man. It's, 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 yeah, we're going to hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Now we have, you know what I'm saying? I'm from Florida. We're from Florida. What do you think Florida is that in the hip hop in the hip hop game? Like you know, cause in my opinion, I feel like you know everybody when they when they get their money, they want to come to Florida. Right? Whether they're going to get models or videos or rent cars, they, they come they come to our home to live their dream. And I feel like it makes it harder for us because we're from there. But what do you think? <laughs> Florida is that in the state of hip hop? Florida is in the state of hip hop right now is one of the states that's on top because the likes of Kodak Black and um Luchi and all them. You know, Florida is is at is at top is as it's one of the states that's at the top right now. Not the only, but it's one of the um uh, like Andre three thousand said a long time ago, the South got something to say. And that's been proven over and over. I remember watching that. I remember watching the Hip Hop Source Award, and, and they hated they hated the Loud Cat. And when he mm-hmm. said that, after that, the South kept taking over. It got to the point to where New York artists, up north artists, were getting down South beats at first. Now it's like you, you get an artist from, from up north, and they they, they flowing and rapping, and it sounds like he's from the crib. Because so, another thing, and you, you, I, you know, and I'm not dis, disrespecting Fat Joe. Oh, Got a lot of respect for Fat Joe, but if you notice, um, some years ago, Fat Joe moved from New York to Miami. You know, when he made that song "Make It Rain," he took mm-hmm. quite a few of the, you know, he got with Lil Wayne. Yep. He adapted that, you know. He still kept it New York, but he mixed it up with the South, you know, the South you know culture. What's crazy about that, T. Ellis, like uh, Fat Joe and Noriega. I, I listen to all their podcasts. I'm, I'm, I'm big fans of their music I mean, for years, and they said that was their best move because in New York. Whatever the situation, situation they were going through, it wasn't safe for them and their family. And they went to Miami, mm-hmm. and our culture is how it's like. You go to Florida, somebody could be from a whole other, other country, or American Indian, or straight from the crib, or all that. But we show love. We spread love. And our, right. our sound, our Florida sound, is so different. That the, most, most of, the, most of, the, most of the, the rap community across the world, United States, whatever, they don't. They hear it. They don't really understand what we we, we put. We put out that struggle music, that party music. We put out vibes. Even mm-hmm. Florida, you got vibes. And I'm glad that you brought that up, man. That's powerful, of you, T. Ellis. I love that, man. Oh, well, one more thing, dog. You know, please let everybody know how they can find you on social media. Well, you can find me on Facebook on a Travis Ellison, Twitter on a Travis Ellison. Um. I don't think a lot of people know about this website. Tumblr on on the oh, Travis Ellison. Yo, yeah. Yo, I, 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 Find me under that. Like, yo, if somebody, I mean, cause you are, somebody need a meme or looking for something funny or something real talk about, go to Tumblr. Get you a, if you got a Tumblr account, get you one right now. 
After the interview, grab your Tumblr account. T U M B L R. Tumblr, where is that? And as far as my music, you can find my music on SoundCloud, T. Ellis, and YouTube, T. Ellis. Now, one of the last things I want to say, because my time don't get a lot of recognition, I want to give a big shout out to my hometown, Alachua, Florida. I want to give a shout out to my fellow rappers over there, F4B Nation, Black Dro. And I definitely want to give a shout out to Gainesville, UL, and all the rappers around in Gainesville. Yee! That's love. That's much love, man. Now, T. Ellis, I know we got a question. And um, last but not least, um, PC Urban Magazine, like I said, PC Urban, PCUrbanMag.com. We got an issue out this month. Then we got another issue coming out June, July, and August. And I want to give a big shout out to the owner, Larry Wayne. And I definitely want to give a shout out to Juan West, Don Simpson. Now, uh, PC Urban, they're based out of Atlanta, correct? No, based out of Panama. Oh, Panama, Florida? Yeah. And that's Panhandle. Okay. And uh, what, what were you saying about Juan West? Who do you want to give a shout out to? I want to say that again. You, you're talking about One West Magazine. You give a shout out. But, yeah, uh, I want to get to the owner, Don Silver. You no, know, for just for giving me the opportunity to even work with the magazine, with the magazine, because you know they're a big deal on the West Coast. That is Don Simpson, that name ring. I don't know why, but that, that name ring a bells in my head right now. I know. Yeah, you're on, you on Facebook. Yeah. How, how, how did you link up with uh, PC Urban and also uh, One West? How, how did that How did that come together? Well, PC Urban, um, back in 2016, you know, just on my Facebook. And I ran across, I, I ran, Larry Wayne, I ran across, um, no, I seen the other, because she had a magazine. I ran, I was like, well, because I had an idea, because at the time, I was like, now nah, I want to do my own magazine, but I didn't know how to put it together. So I ran across a magazine, and I ran across her name, and I reached out to her. Yeah. So a couple weeks later, she was like, okay, I, you, you want to work the magazine? I said, yeah. So basically, what I do is submission. I find people to get in the magazine. I help promote it and all that. For sure. So, Boom. So, that business. Putting that business together. Because me, you know, other than the music, I believe in networking. Definitely. You know, talking to people in the industry. Just, and don't disrespect nobody else. You can, a rap can be the best in their time, but if you don't got the work ethic and, you know, networking and, and connect with different people, yeah, you, 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 you will never know how far you can go. Now, you say work ethic. Now, you know, I'm an artist as well, too, and I, I had to branch off into writing for magazines, photography, film, management. Mm -hmm. Now, to an up-and-coming artist, you know, that he may have recorded a song, and his hood, his homeboys, you know what I'm saying, girls, out of the hood, they, they love it. Now, when, when you say work ethic, what does that include? Let's educate the ones that want to get on. What that includes is as far as rapping. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, it's right. It's it's pretty much at your fingertips. Um, if you're waiting on your song to come out, mixtape to come out, go live or record videos on your phone, post it, tag people, um, network with the you know as many people as you can in the industry. You don't have to detail down to one a DJ network with different people. And if you when your song come out, you know, try to get experience, you know, interviews, whatever you can do. You know, be consistent. So we met. That's, I mean, that's real. You know, be consistent, basically. So remember when I met you, I met you uh, through, 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 through your management company. I had no mm -hmm. idea you were an artist until a couple of days ago. And you, you talked about, you know, the interviews and things like that. And uh, um, Miss Sky, you know, and everything. And you was like, oh, you're like, yo, front porch, I do this too. When I heard it, I'm looking like, ooh. Ain't no competition. The video, I'm like, ooh, okay, I dig that. I dig that. And we got, we got about... We got about like uh, five more minutes left, man, for the interview. Cause we're gonna we're gonna do a whole half hour half hour block. You know what I mean? For the interview, T.L. No. Okay. Can you, can you tell us about? You said you had three mixtapes. Can you tell us about you know what what you know uh, everything you want to say about those three mixtapes for us on the front porch radio? Well, the first mixtape um is called Nothing to Something. That's the one I had put out in 2016. But I had recorded so many songs, I put out another mixtape called T. Ellis the Rap Life. Mm. Then a friend of mine, you know, who I mentioned earlier, 
we put out a mixtape called Squirt Out a Lotsway. That that's what we call a lot. You know, we call it Lotsway. So okay. you know, all three of those is on YouTube plus SoundCloud. And uh you got that's for the pleasure, man. Uh, repeat that. Uh, we got like a few more minutes left, but uh, let everybody know again how they can find you on social media. Um, Facebook, Travis Ellison, Twitter, Travis Ellison, Tumblr, Travis Ellison, the music, SoundCloud, YouTube, and all that. For sure. Now, T. Ellis, what is your definition of a hustler? Um, well, I would have to say somebody who is, you know, who's going to go get it no matter what. That's not going to let something start. And I mean, you know, the legal way. Yeah, 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 definitely, for sure. Yeah. If it ain't, like Paul said, if the, if the money ain't come in in one area, you know, create another lane and, and go get it that way. Like an octopus. Always protect the hands yeah. and let them arms do what they do and grab. Let them suck just grab everything else but protect the head at all costs. Right. Now, with that being said, I do want to say um, Sean Combs, P. Diddy, Damon Dash, Master P. This is why I do look up to them. Oh, 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 oh. You, you mentioned, yo, I got love for, I got love for Diddy. I love, I got now, love see, a, now, a lot of people in the industry, Master P. they kind of disdain that, but Damon Dash, man. Damon Dash, yeah, got a lot of no, a lot of knowledge. I learned some things from Damon Dash, from music. and I don't even know the man personally. Yeah, but but, but the way they open the game up to being like, you could be an artist, you could also have a clothing line, you could be a management, you could be a boss at all costs, and, and put people in positions to be bosses for themselves. And that's that's. that's, I, that's I do want to add two more things. I kind of stopped doing a while ago, but I was doing my online clothing line, fifty fifty grand. That's something. I'm about to get back into, and my official album will be out this year, T. Ellis and Young Boss. Oh, say it again? My um, album will be out this year, T. Ellis and Young Boss, and I ain't no competition. It's the lead single. Okay. Do you want to give a, a shout-out to any producers or engineers that, you know, help put this T. Ellis and Young Boss together? Well, I want to give a shout-out to my two producers, um, Ned Seti and Libra Beach. Okay. And I give a shout to my former partner, Mr. Bionic. You know, he put he doing his own thing. Give a shout out to him too. Definitely, man. Now you know we about, we about to close it on out. Uh, you have any last words for the listeners, for the fans, and to build new fans? Any last words? Well, I'm gonna say this. Um, when it comes down to your dream, something you want to do, never give up. If you're good at one thing. Never limit yourself. You're good at one thing. You could be good at five things. Hmm. If you're good at one so thing, you're thing good you could be good at five things. Yeah. If you're good at baking cakes, you could probably be good at frying chicken. I'm saying don't never limit yourself. Because if you limit yourself, you will never know how far you can go. I dig that, man. But, hey, we on the front porch with T. Ellis, the young boss. Check out Ain't No Competition. We're going to play on the Front Porch Radio. Oh, and I, got to say, I want to say one more thing. I want to give a shout-out yeah. to, you know, my model, Aaliyah Sky. You know, she just may be on the next season of Love and Hip Hop Miami. So I'm working hey, that deal right now. So, I, know, I know we talked about this earlier, but, you know, the next interview is on the house, man, because uh, what TLS had to say was inspirational and strong. So we're going to go ahead and cut this off and bring it back to some music. And show some love, man. But coming up right now is that T. Ellis, the young boss, ain't no competition. Yee!